Hello again and welcome to another Mordy and Glory Warhammer 40k video. In today's episode, Simon and I are going to be discussing the new Tau Codex. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is a bit of an after battle report report because uh, we've just finished playing uh, a game. And uh, Simon ran his Steel Legion, his Mech Guard, and he had Double Dawn in there as well. Oh. Double Dawn, baby. Double D's, got to have them. And I was running my Tau Army. And uh, spoiler alert, obviously, if you've not seen uh, that battle part, I'll make sure there's a link to it down below. Please go and watch it if you haven't done so already, uh, because you will basically find out the result of that game uh, in the next 30 seconds. That's <laughs> my uh, reaction. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Uh, now, um, I was running, just to give a bit of context here, Simon, you were running uh, your sort of new and improved mech guard. Uh, you had Rogal Dawns in there rather than the Lehman Russes, and you were using, you know, you was using the Lord Solar rather than uh, relying on tank commanders. And I had um, pretty much the same Tau army that um, my, my support, if I actually bought it from my brother, I bought it's my brother's Tau army that pretty much has remained unchanged. Uh, since third edition, uh, you know, we've, we've maybe it's like that we've added like one Riptide and one Ghost Kill to it, but that's about it. By and large, these are all OG Fire Warriors and uh, OG Hammerheads and, and all that kind of good stuff. And you can see we've got some really old school stealth suits in there. Nice. And it was a smashing. The the towel uh, delivered some real pain into the guard and uh, the guard fought tooth and nail and actually there was a couple of points when you could have uh, you know brought it back to maybe like a draw or something like that under wtc rules um but in the end the the, the what you see on the board here is what the tower army had left over uh and the imperial guard had been reduced down to uh one rogal dawn one tech priest and one blob of guardsman uh so that was the casualties had certainly been a little one-sided and so what we uh what we want to talk about today is the new tau codex uh what we think the pros are what we think the cons are what does it feel like to play with it what does it feel like to play into it uh and are there any sort of major issues that we're seeing with it uh, or any major awesome things that we're seeing with it right away so uh what i one thing i want to do is um before we before I hand over to simon i want to say i was running the mont ca detachment and uh Simon, I'm not going to hand over to you for you to give your completely unsalty and unbad. No, go nuts, man. Uh, what, what are your thoughts? What's your first? <laughs> what is your impressions of playing into the Tau with this new detachment? It's like historic Tau gun line, but highly mobile. Mm. It's, uh, yeah. It feels like, it feel, does it feel like the killing blow? It, it was just a slapping. I mean, I you know, we, we go back to steel, we'll get getting on Steel Legion, admittedly, but um, you know, we always say if you you know got your people in the in the tanks in turn three, you're gonna probably gonna win it. Yeah, and I didn't have any people in my tanks after turn two. You didn't have uh, you <laughs> you didn't have two thirds of them after turn one. <laughs> yeah, um, and that's really I think giving them advance as well. Is, yeah. That's the, the tough bit um, because you, you, you know, they can get real good angles. I, mean, I, I, I sort of sat there at the beginning of the first turn thinking that looked to be a bit more aggressive too. And I looked at it and went, well, you can advance everything and still shoot anyway. So. And we've got quite a lot of cover. Like the flanking forces down here were well protected right. from any firepower. Um, and there wasn't too much of a bloodbath in the middle from either side. We actually, the majority of the game took place on these flanks and these flanks didn't really interact with each other. Yeah. So you've got, it's highly mobile. So you get, so for those that don't know, Moncat is, first three turns, all of your ranged weapons get assault. Yeah. So you can advance and shoot. And if you are guided, then you also get lethal hits as well. Or, or maybe even you get lethal hits all the time. It's, it's insane. So um, you are getting a, a lot of, uh, of maneuverability but on top of that, all of your guns, from your pulse rifles, up to all the way, you know, your burst cannons, all of your little guns can actually lay on the hurt and stack on the wounds. Uh, and when you're a Chimera, the three-up save, 
the more those wounds stack up, the, uh, the, 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 the you chew through those that three up quite quickly. You're only a space marine. So you're only a space marine. The Rogal Dawns and stuff uh, lasted a lot longer uh, because I firmly believe you had that two up save. Um, but the Chimeras were just popping left, right, and centre. <laughs> well, so did the uh, so did the Lehman Ross. That was a big thing. So it, uh, I popped the Lehman Ross in one one with one vehicle. Okay. One hammerhead. Uh, it was even it was the iron cannon one as well. Uh, I think fired uh, two seeker missiles uh, and they, and got a good good number of shots with the with the iron cannon. And uh, I, I popped the Russ in one go. And that was, I think, the moment when Simon and I both looked at each other and went, oh, oh, shit. Oh, oh, dear. Oh, damn. Oh, damn. Um, I'll tell you what stood out for me, though. We're sort of looking, you know, sort of compare, you know, we're looking at the guard for a moment here, but as the sort of the person playing into them with you know, using the towel, Lehman Russes felt paper thin. <laughs> yeah. But the Rogal Dawns felt tough. Really, really tough. And what and I I I shudder to think what that game would have been like if you'd had your rust your traditional rusts and hellhounds. Oh god, yeah, that'd been over. It would have been over even quicker. Yeah, I, I mean, I the, the first, dawns had the staying power. They did, but then you didn't shoot them until after your. No, I shot them to it from turn two. No, no, no. That's how I got rid of your blade to plating and stuff. No, that was turn four. Or turn three. I shot him turn three, definitely. I gave it a crack. But not that. But if in another game, all that anti tank, it'd be interesting. I'm not saying it right or wrong, but in another game, but this game, all that anti tank has got targets everywhere. It's target saturation, you know, everywhere you're looking, there's something that's worth putting that gun in. If you were playing hybrid or something else, Horde then guard maybe, yeah. those, got, those tanks are all going to go into those. Mm. So, um, what's I, kind of funny though is I don't actually feel like I have a huge amount of anti-tank, which might sound crazy to you, <laughs> but I only have two railguns. I have two rail. They're they're big strength. That strength eight. That strength eight. They're all strength eight. They're strength nine. That's not proper anti-tank. It's reason it becomes anti-tank is because of the lethals. Yeah, well that's that big thing up there. All right. Damage well, four. Yeah, damage four, re-roll hit, re-roll wound. Uh, no, that, that that got re-roll ones to hit and re-roll ones to wound. Because right. I thought it was guided by a stealth team. But it was hitting on twos anyway. No, threes. Was it? Yeah. Because that just popped... Uh... It just I just hit with everything. Yeah. No, that's a fair point. Again, it was the lethals. I rolled the dice. I got two yeah. lethals. I rolled the dice again uh, for the wounding and got a, 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 a dev wound through because I'd used my Nova charge and I just fucking slapped a hellhound off the board. <laughs> Like, yeah, it was brutal. Any any medium, uh, anything that was light or medium armor in this game could not stand up to just the the, the almost the supporting tau anti tank. They've got a. I know it sounds obvious, but I think the main point we're trying to make here is it's a horrendous amount of firepower. It is. It is. Um, I mean, it might just be a really bad matchup, but you know, if you can. You know, if you can eliminate all my scoring units, then, you know, great having two Rogal Dawns. Um, I, you know what would be an interesting matchup, and I shudder to think why I'd even suggest this, but <sighs> and why how this will play into something like Knights. Huh, yeah. You're a three-up save on Knights. Plus five up in one, plus... I think the three-up save is going to be really horrible for you. We, I think I, if, if I can yeah. kill four Chimeras, I can kill two Knights. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, now I've said it out loud. It's, I take it back. Next bar for <laughs> Yeah. I'd um, love to see how this did into um, a fast horde like an ending swarm. Yeah, I think that might be its uh, might be its uh, paper. Because I think scissors. the fast horde takes away a lot of its mobility because you just flood the board. Yeah. And uh, you're you take away you, there isn't there's a decent amount of anti infantry here, but there's it's a lot of it, a lot of the anti infantry is AP zero, so yeah. a lot of that horde is going to be on a four up for yeah. cover. Yeah, hundred and twenty hormigons running this thing down. <laughs> it might make it. Yeah. Now a couple of points that I just want to sort of just pop into my head right now. The army list in general that I ran, um, it felt like a hybrid guard army. 
Yeah. I actually yeah, felt I like, I, yeah, I actually felt like I had a little bit of everything. I had a um, couple of transports. I had 60 infantry. Um, I had some, you know, a couple, a couple of elite units with my uh, crisis suits. I had, a, I quite liked the stealth teams. They didn't really do much, but it was nice having the, the go, oh, you're guided, we were ones, we were ones. Uh, and I had, you know, a few tanks. It felt like, a, it did feel like quite a balanced army. And um, whilst it might have been quite horrible to play into, I do feel like this is the way that I would like to play Tau because it's not overly skewed. It feels like, it, sometimes you do find that, what do you think it's skewed? No, I'm just saying you found quite fun to play it because it's not skewed. Well, it's good to have a palate cleanse every now and again, isn't it? Yeah, I do often run skewed armies, but um, I have been enjoying the more balanced way with my Death Guard. I've been taking, you know, a little bit less, not just like hordes of Plague Marines. I've been taking some mechanised stuff there. Um, although I do just friggin' love taking hordes of infantry. But yeah, I know I really, I, I, what I found with this army is I felt like uh, my Pathfinders had a good job and they did something and every unit felt usable. Yeah. It felt quite balanced. Every unit felt usable. If I was to level sort of one criticism at it, at it uh, I would quite like to have something that could like deep strike in and do some secondaries. My yeah. Crew Hounds, there were a couple of times, I had, I had a unit of Crew Hounds and there was one turn when I was like, I really wish I could just deploy Teleport Home in your like backfield, but I can't do it. Um, what would I take out to squeeze that in? Maybe one of the stealth teams. I felt like three was a bit much. I don't think you needed three. I think two stealth teams. Drop the stealth team. One of the stealth teams. Drop the crew hounds. Uh, and I've got 110 points. See if I can squeeze in like some Vespid or something. I like the Pathfinders though. They seem to do. They were quite nice. They yeah. were guiding two units. Yeah. Um, hammerheads felt great. Yeah. Hammerheads felt really, really good. Uh, and I was actually surprised at how effective the Ion Cannon one was. Uh, when I've used him in the Mont Car detachment, uh, he felt like a big bag of shit. And he was the one that often died first. And maybe that explains why I didn't really enjoy him, because he never got to stick around long enough uh, uh, to start feeling the power of the Mont Car. Uh, of the uh, the Cayune, I should say. The, I used him in the Cayune attachment, and he never stuck around long enough for that. Uh, in the Mont Car attachment, I actually felt like uh, he had the volume from his shots, like his... His D6 was three shots. He had the volume there uh, to um, actually get some lethals and to do some damage. AP2 is a bit poo, but... It's better than AP1. It's better than AP1 and it's damage three. I never, I never turn my noise with damage three. Uh, the hammerheads, though, I've been having a bit of a sword of love affair with vanquishers and hammerheads scratch that same itch. Uh, I'm not surprised they've gone up to 145 points. Uh, that seems like a much better place for them to be. Uh, 130 would be, quite frankly, uh, horrendous. Yeah. Um, compare them to a Vanquisher. The Vanquisher has more support weapons, so if the big shot misses, you can still do something with it. But the big shot of the uh, of the of the rail cannon does feel, with the reroll to hit and to wound inbuilt, it does feel better. Yeah, well, I mean, like you said, it's if you put it into a Lehman Ross, it's going to be one in 36 to miss, one in nine to not wound. And then you go straight through because you're guided, because you're ignoring cover. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the guiding, ignoring cover thing, you have to have marker lights, but it's so easy to put a marker drone in every squad. Yeah. Yeah, like, that's what I had. I that, that's the same with the Vanquisher. Uh, I was trying to put in a few in, that having one shot, uh, one shot that's got re-rolls on everything, um, it is vicious. <laughs> yeah it's you know a big powerful shot as long as you've got re-roll re-roll um it, it, it's again it, it completely changes the the outlook of that one unit mm. i was uh I'll tell you what i uh, i was quite uh in what, what i found quite interesting was comparing your lethal hits to my lethal hits because you had them throughout the entire game but i only had them for the first three and uh, yeah, I had been able to do what I needed to do in the first three turns so that when my lethal hits turned off, I actually was like, okay, I'm still in a decent position here. Well, I think you had them for longer than I did because I had nothing left. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That is true. But um, the, guy, the, the the lethal hits going away after turn after on turn four, turn five, you really, really notice it. Like, and I'm, I am not surprised that Montcar has become the go-to detachment for uh, for the Tau players. It's it feel if you're right, often games of 40k can be won in the first two turns. 
Mm. And if you, have a, if you have a detachment and a place down on a list that supports that, it can be horrendous. I should have, this is not an optimized Mont Car, and if it is, it's completely accidentally. I should have to think what a proper Tau player with experience and with a proper Tau collection and really just tuning it up. I, sh I should, I would not want to face that in, into that as guard. I mean, to be fair, I, I dropped some clangers, though I forgot overlapping fields of fire a couple of times. Um, yeah. Certainly turn two, that was a complete utter. I didn't use them. The only stratagem I used in my army was the minus one damage. See, I think this edition, there's stratagem usage is a lot better. I mean, because, A, you've only got six or seven to fit. But actually, most attachments only have one or two that you, you play. I, uh, in ninth edition, in one turn, I spent nine CP. <laughs> trying to keep track of all your bloody yeah that's that to be fair i think that's a one thing ten well i think ten is a very good addition but i think i think the the strategy and spam going is fantastic yeah best bit of the addition uh, sometimes it's easy to 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 focus on the negatives and forget the the positives and 10th i think the best thing it's done is raining strategies in yeah you still have some annoying ones like armor contempt but a few and far between yeah but i mean it's fine if everyone's got one or two that they you know but it's it's uh i mean can you remember there's some of the other, you had some in you you had your detachment ones and three different core books. ones oh. yeah three different books oh, those are the days yeah um so i think you know i think that's 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 nice it's you know what you're going to use as guard you're going to use well reinforcements once now <laughs> don't get me started man that's a whole separate video <laughs> i feel like i'm traitor here but that's uh you're gonna you're gonna regret that, man. You're gonna wish that they'd kept it around. See, no, I fixed it though. I came up with it. I, I've got the fix for it. The happy medium. Just the first three turns. First three turns. Mont ca that yeah. reinforcements, and yeah. then you've run out of reinforcements. Yeah, you can't use it turn four or five. Yeah. So that that you know, so actually, you can use it more than once, but not. I think it just you can't come into your opponent's deployment zone ever. It just makes it really simple. Anyway, we're off. We're off, we're off topic. topic. Again, uh, so let's go. Nice. Just to sort of refocus onto the towel, just to go through some of the units uh, that I used and how how each one of them felt. Uh, the Rail Cannon Hammerhead felt really good, although after the Seeker Missiles were popped, I did uh, find that relying on that big gun felt a little nerve-wracking, but it did seem to always deliver. Um, the Melter Bow Suits, they were good. Yeah. They dropped down and, and eliminated a, a Chimera and then they eliminated a Hellhound uh, one turn after the other. To be fair, they could have done it all in one turn with the amount of uh, wounds. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, did they actually do enough wounds to kill them both. Yeah, they did 23 damage in one turn. That's them both dead. And that's them both dead. So the, the Melter suits, uh, be uh, be aware of them if you're playing into them. Uh, they are, they are going to drop down and do a lot of damage. The Strength 9 isn't such a big problem when... Uh, again, you're looking for those for those lethals, and you do have rerolls to wound and to damage as well. So as long as you can get the, what I found is pairing the uh, the melter blades uh, with the um, stealth suits, so that you drop down, you guide them, you're hitting on threes, you're rolling ones, and then once you've got getting the hits in, it's a difficult bit. Getting the wounds in, not so difficult when you've got those four rerolls to wound and the, and the damage and all that kind of stuff. Um, the other crisis suits, the ones the plasma and the missile, they were okay. They, uh, I have to say that the melter, the melter ones are probably better. They didn't have any targets, though. Yeah, they didn't have any great. They're, they're a jack of all trades, master of none, uh, and that the, they were okay going into one of the chimeras. Uh, but the, I think the real reason you take them is if you play against marines. They'll they'll drop down. They'll uh, they'll zap a unit of termies. They'll zap a unit of uh, of intercessors or something like that. But uh, they're not. They they they're your go to if you don't know what you're going to face. But I think in this edition, you, you, you're probably better going for those just because you know you're going to be facing tanks. Yeah. Um, I haven't tried the other ones out, though, but they're flamers and burst cannons, and I have plenty of pulse stuff in this army anyway. Speaking of pulse stuff, Fire Warriors, really impressed by them. Um, they didn't do a huge amount, but they didn't give up a huge amount either. Uh, the 4 plus save, a 3 plus in cover, plus the Guardian drone, plus the ability to uh, get lots of rapid fire pulse rifle shots at a long range. How many points today for a squad? 75. 10? Yeah. And you get your marker drone and your Guardian drone in there. So that's only 15 points more than a... Uh, it's 10 points more than a Kree squad. Mm. But they don't have any special weapons. No, they don't, but they're a bit more sticky. Yeah. 
Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, yeah, definitely found, definitely found Fire Warriors good. Uh, it's a shame we can only get 60 of them because I'd probably... I definitely feel like I could uh, mm. use a few more. The interesting one to try out will be breaches next time. They they are very potent, but they have to get up close and personal. Yeah. I actually found that I quite enjoy just z- popping you from uh, a bit further away. I think the reason I've got so many fire warriors left over is because they weren't on the front lines. But I guess tower players are probably thinking: zoom in, jump them out, delete something, and if they die, they die. Yeah. Um, stealth teams really good. Uh, the, the their guiding now giving reward ones to hit and reward ones to wound, uh, very effective. Sixty points for three of them. Again, very cheap. Uh, I definitely take two or three. I definitely take at least two of those in every list. Uh, Ghost kill was good. I played him uh, a little too. He didn't do anything in our game because he died turn one. I played him too aggressively, but the fact that his big gun is strength twelve now, uh, I think running three of those and just kiting at eighteen inches and just zapping melter shots off would be. Very difficult for the enemy to deal with. See, if I hadn't got lucky and popped him, that would I should have think. Yeah, he would have been doing horrible things to you. It's just, it's just more anti-tank in that first turn. Yeah. Probably take out another. Probably take out the other two chimeras. Probably take. Yeah. Yeah. Could have literally left me with two dogs in the first turn. Maybe not quite that. Not far off. Not far off. Wow. Yeah. Um, Riptide, he's solid. Um, the strength eight on the gun is a bit. Bleh. But the fact that you can get him up to devs with the Nova Charge, and again in Montca getting the lethal hits, uh, it does get around that a little bit. Uh, his big gun is very good. He's 180 points, and he's relatively tough. Uh, until you started hitting him with some proper AP, he wasn't taking a wound. Yeah. Uh, Devil fishes are great. Um, Devil fishes have, have made me completely reevaluate my stance on the Torox and the guard. Um, I think the difference is the Delphish do get two Seeker Missiles. And we'll come on to those things in a moment. Uh, but the ability to move, advance, and get out. I'm thinking things. <laughs> I'm thinking things. Uh, Toroxes are uh, 25 points cheaper than this. Or maybe 20 points cheaper than this. And uh, yeah, they're, they're nowhere near as durable. And they've only got an auto cannon and, a, and like a, a Storm Bolter. But I'm thinking, you know, having having... A unit that can move, advance, and jump out. I think there's something there. I think I'm gonna. I'm thinking I might be getting one or six Toroxes for my guard just to try it out. That pretty much covers everything. Oh, Pathfinders really enjoyed the Pathfinders. The double guard was great, and the best bit was the the rail rifles. They were they added a lot of uh, supplementary anti tank, having two squads of those and six rail rifles. Uh, units that I'm looking forward to trying out in the future. Uh, I'll have a second Riptide, so it'll be interesting to run more than one. I've never run double Riptide before. Uh, bleh, 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 I was thrown up. And I'll tell you what I am very excited for. Broadsides. Broadside battle suits. I think I've got... I think I have... Nine more battle suits coming. And I think six of them are broadsides. Um, and they're the old school ones as well. So they're OG. Yeah, I think I've got... I can't remember quite... I think I've got nine... Yeah, three more crisis suits uh, and six broadsides on the way. Something like that. Pretty spicy, to say the least. Now, the one... Speaking of sort of specific units and stuff, I want to now delve just a tiny bit deeper and talk about what I think is the unsung hero of the entire Tau army. It's not the rail cannon... It's not the Ion Cannon. It's not even this, whatever the fuck this, fuck this is called. It is the Seeker Missile. <laughs> <laughs> the, so for those of you that don't know, Seeker Missiles are basically the Tau version of Hunter Killer Missiles. The big difference is that they are, I think Hunter Killer Missiles are just D6 damage, whereas Seeker Missiles are D6 plus one, like a Laz Cannon. Now, Hunter Killer Missiles in the guard, I have been surprised... Uh, how effective they've been when I've been able to mass them up. Whenever I've run Met Guard and in one turn I've unleashed like nine or ten Hunter Killer missiles in one go, I've, it's actually added a lot of damage. Um, when we were at Adepticon, uh, thanks to the Seeker missiles, uh, Chris and I, when we were running the double, the double two thousand point guard, essentially, uh, we were able to kill two Catan in one turn, and a huge part of that was down to Hunter Killers. But the thing with with guard vehicles is you get one. One hunter killer per vehicle. Tower vehicles get two each. And that is massive. That first turn, 
In one turn, I popped four Chimeras and a Hellhound on Simon's side. I, in one turn, I gained the armor superiority. Yeah. And that was entirely, not partially, entirely down to the Seeker Missiles. Because I would go one vehicle, pop. Not not two vehicles, one pop, one pop. I have I have five vehicles in this army, guys, and I killed five enemy vehicles. And two of those vehicles are Devilfish. Yeah. And the Devilfish popped the Chimera. Each. They might have had a little bit of, you know, teeing up from some guiding and uh, maybe a few, you know, other that's units here and there. I think that's the key difference. The guiding. Yeah. You get guiding with, oh, well, the difference is you don't really have enough orders to order every vehicle, no. where I have enough guiding to guide every vehicle. So generally, I bet you you're going to have three, maybe. Three to five orders is typical in a mech army because you've got the Lord Solar and then a one tank commander. Yeah. Every unit in my army gets guided. Exactly. So that that's, and you've got the double the shots, and then you've got all the special rules behind it as well. Yeah. And any, any Tau unit can guide another unit. It's just, if you get marker lights, they get a bit better. Yeah. Pretty. So that's, so it, it, you know, A, you get, you get two, and then when you do have it, you find them in the three or three turns where you've got lethal hits. And hmm. so that, again, ratchets them up another notch yeah yeah 100% but I think I think the the guiding is very nah, the first few times I used tower I didn't I mean I, and I, to be clear I don't play tower regularly so there's you know, maybe, maybe I've I probably got probably got loads of stuff wrong in that battle report but I feel like the guiding was you know you take it's pretty simple to understand this unit is going to spot for this unit this unit now gets plus one to hit yeah and also because I've got a marker light, you've got um, sorry, so plus one ballistic skill. And also because I've got a marker light, you're not ignoring cover. Yeah. And also Montcast, so lethal hits. So you can't do that with... It's a lot more than the guard go and take aim. Yeah. Mm. So that's, that's a, you know, yes, you've got more, but it's it's the fact that you... You get more do. and they're better. Yeah. That's that's a huge... And you've got... Especially in this, because again, you've got... Assault. You can, assault, so you can get the angles you want. Mm. It's very, very powerful. Yeah. But, uh... It's, it's more powerful than I thought, to be honest. I was not... It's much more powerful than I thought, as well. I, uh, I think we were both a little stunned. <laughs> uh, and uh, I think, right now, uh, it's important... The reason, sort of, my final closing thoughts on this, on sort of, this first impressions of the Codex is, we're looking, let's look at the big picture, let's look at the meta. Um... What are Tau ta are a very competitive, uh, sorry, a Tau very popular army on the competitive scene. Uh, I don't think I've ever been to a tournament where there hasn't been at least someone running Tau. And so, if and if and I think right now the Tau are kind of just exploring their codex a little bit, they're trying out different attachments. We're seeing some people go like Croot Jail, some people trying to make the Christ suits work in the retaliation cadre. Um, but I think I my impression is going to be that they are going to decide to coalesce around Monka. And I think if really specced into, it could be a very, very powerful... I think it could be... We're talking easily RTT winning. I think we're talking easily uh, regular-sized GT winning. I don't have enough knowledge to say if it's going to do better than that, but I will not be surprised if Tau start winning tournaments. I think, I think the other thing with it, you're going to see that not being a Tau player, but I imagine a lot of the units you would want to, to run that detachment, most Tau players are going to have. Or, yeah, they're going to have or they're going to get them. The, 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 you know, it's, it's not niche. None of this is niche. This is all... No. I reckon I could... last. I reckon I could take this to a, a tournament and come out with two and one or three and two. Mm. Maybe that's a challenge. It'd be interesting to see about uh, how it would play against something like Grey Knights and... Uh... Screen you out. Mm. Turn one. Uh, I'm, uh, th think of all the infiltrators I had. Yeah. I have four infiltrators. I just go bloop, bloop, bloop. I wonder, yeah. I mean, there, there will be hard counters to it. I'm just wondering what they are. Yeah, I think... I think Wolf Jail. Space Wolves. Yeah. If the Space Wolf player can roll enough four-up and vulnerable saves, yeah. uh, he, he, he'll run into this tower list and, and smash it. Yeah. But if he doesn't make those four-up and vulnerable saves, he's going to have a very, very... Very bad game. And on that note, I'm going to wrap this up. Let us know. This, of course, all of this is just like 
our opinions, man. Let us know what you think down in the comment section below. Are you a towel player? What are your thoughts on the Codex? What are, you th what are your thoughts on Monka? And are you someone who's played into the towel? And if so, what are your thoughts and feelings on them? Where do you think they are strong? And more importantly, where do you think they can be countered? If you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to smash that like button and also subscribe to never miss an episode. Would you like to know more? If so, then please consider becoming a channel member or patron. By supporting the channel, not only will you be doing your part, but you'll also be helping me create more content for your viewing pleasure and unlocking a whole host of perks. You get everything from a badge next to your name, custom emojis, but the big one is access to the Mordian Glory Discord server, an online community with almost two and a half thousand active members. It's always popping off in the MG Discord. We've got channels for army lists, hobbying, tactics, stories, and even a pretty spicy meme section as well. For all you greenhorns that wanted to see the Mordian glory hole, today is a lucky day. And joking aside, I do want to say a massive thank you to all of the current channel members and patreons you guys are amazing truly the lifeblood of the channel i could not do more doing glory full-time without the incredible and generous support of my members so thank you guys so much and last but certainly not least i want to say a personal thank you to all of my top tier patreons these are the war masters, the people who have truly gone above and beyond the call of duty. To a heartfelt thank you to Alex Dengal, Bon Bon Vert, Mad Larkin, Marcus Roberts, Mark Panconi, RJ Scorpion, Swordfish Trombone, Try Again Bragg, John Stubbs, Nick Wolf, Diesel Fox, and August Barney. Seriously guys, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Your support is incredible and it makes a huge difference. Thank you so much. That's all for now. Hope you've all enjoyed today's video. And of course, as always, see you guys next time.